Accounting 16 Transfer Pricing. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email and our phone number. You'll also find us on Facebook now at St. Louis Test Prep. Any large company will have goods and services transferred between segments, between divisions, and that's what we referred to in the first bullet point as a transfer price. When segments transfer goods and services between each other, there must be a price charge between segments and that price we call a transfer price. And why is it important? The transfer price affects the profit of both the buying and selling units. And specifically, that transfer price is going to affect the performance evaluations of the managers working there and also the decisions those managers make. And what we need to consider when we have transfer pricing in terms of the overall company is goal congruence, which is another way of saying in the first bullet point, is everybody on the same page. Specifically, that transfer price should allow the manager to do two things. First, to maximize the overall or company profit, while also attempting to, man man to maximize the profit of his division. So if you're working for Cyril Lee and you're in the division that makes donuts, you want to have a transfer price that maximizes Cyril Lee company-wide profit, but also allows you to maximize the profit in the donut segment of the business. The second bullet point is a formula for transfer pricing. Two things dictate transfer price. First of all, is there any additional outlay of cost due to the transfer? Is there anything extra that we need to do and incur expenses for? And second is a term you've seen before, opportunity cost, and that is, did I lose profit, did I lose an opportunity to profit more by selling these goods to somebody else? And those two factors make up the transfer price. What I flipped over to is a transfer price under which we assume there is no excess capacity with the person making the product or service. So again, we define transfer price here, the amount charged when one division sells goods and services to another. And a new comment that overall company profit isn't affected because the profit to one will be an expense, the profit to one division will be an expense to another division. So when we consolidate the financials and put everything together, one cost will offset the other's profit. So here's our example. This is a company that makes batteries. It has a capacity of 300,000 units, a selling price to the outside world of $40, a variable cost per battery of 18, and a fixed cost per battery of 7 well, at a $300,000 $300, unit capacity. So the auto division of the same company raises their hand and says, we'd like 100,000 units of the battery. And the question is, what is the transfer cost? And it's made up of two pieces. First of all, the variable cost, same variable cost for the product. That's part of the transfer price. And secondly, what's given up by the battery division by selling these units to the auto division? They're giving up the opportunity to sell the good at 40 and have a variable cost of 18. So they are giving up 40 minus 18, or $22. So if we add the variable cost to the opportunity cost per unit, the total transfer price that the battery division charges the auto division should be $40. We make the point at the bottom. If we're producing at capacity, then the selling price should also be the market price. So essentially we're saying whether it's within our company or outside of our company, here's the market price for the product. What about transfer pricing when there is excess capacity? What if, for example, the battery division was only selling 150,000 units to outsiders? They have the capacity to produce 300,000. The auto division raises their hand and says, we want 100,000 units. And the difference here being is that the units are not part of the current demand or current production. What should the transfer price be? In this case, the transfer price is only that variable cost. There is no opportunity cost given up by the battery division to sell the goods to the auto division. 
because they weren't selling that additional 100,000 units anyway. So the transfer price is 18. So with ex excess capacity, the transfer price is simply the variable cost per unit. One more example, and that is that we can have a transfer price that's negotiated. Assume the company allows division managers to negotiate transfer prices. The managers agree on a tentative price of $80 per unit. But then they also agree that that price will be reduced by an equal sharing of the additional income that the manufacturer could get by selling the good to somebody else. So here's what we mean. Gamma division manufactures a good. They sell some to Omega, 12,000 units, and they sell 48,000 to outsiders for a capacity of 60,000 units. Here are the sales and variable costs related to both of those structures. We have sales and variable costs to the Omega division. We have sales and variable costs to outsiders, and you can see that the price to the outsiders that we sell to is much higher than the price internally. So let's look at a scenario where we're selling 12,000 units to an outside supplier. Gamma could charge $80, incur variable costs of $55, and have a profit of $25. So the profit for selling 12,000 units to an outside supplier is $25. So Gamma says to Omega, look, we can sell it to the outside world at $80, but we're willing to sell it internally if we're able to keep, we, Gamma, are able to keep half the profit. Half of the $25 to an outsider is $12.50, so Gamma agrees to sell to Omega for a new transfer price of $67.50, because Gamma essentially says, the corporation essentially says that the two of you, Gamma, and Omega can negotiate the price, and the negotiation will be based on the profit that Omega was, that Gamma was making for selling this good to an outsider. So they agree that Gamma will raise their price to the tune of half of the profit that they were making by selling it to somebody in the outside world. That's the end of Management Accounting 16. You'll see a video summary of our essential topics in management accounting, three hour-long courses that we do on GoToMeeting.com. You can find out more on the video. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. A listing of our videos is on our website. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and ch uh, live chat sessions, also in small group, stltest.net is our website. Here's our email and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.